if you want to evaluate a function on a number of points, the way this is commonly done in MATLAB is that you first create a vector of all the points on the x-coordinate where you want to evaluate a function, and then you feed that vector into a expression of that function and the broadcasting will automatically evaluate the function for all these elements. So x divided by 20 gives you all the numbers in this vector divided by 20 times 2 pi does the multiplication that you would expect. We don't need the dot here because this isn't a matrix. This is a multiplication with a scalar where dot and dot star are the same. Uh, we now have a 20 element vector. If you feed that into the cosine function, then the cosine is element wise executed on each of those elements. And then again, the resulting vector will be multiplied with one half and uh, subtracted from one half. So now we have a vector consisting of x coordinates and a vector consisting of y coordinates. And if we uh, feed that into one of the plotting functions, a vector of x coordinates, a vector of y coordinates, then all the pairs of coordinates will be plotted. And the uh, then there are numerous additional functions that you can use in order to decorate the uh, plot result. For example, you can put a title on top or you can add a legend to the plot result. There exists not only the stem function for these uh, plots where you have discrete values on an x-axis, for example, for some time series data where you want to highlight the fact that this is a discrete time time series data. There's also, of course, the normal plot xy function which draws a continuous line. If you have several functions, you just provide one vector of x coordinates, one vector of y coordinates, another vector of x coordinates, another vector of y coordinates, and you have plotted both functions. And if you want to have a grid in the background, then you just write grid. And by default, uh, these plot functions just open a window, but they also create a plot object or a figure object uh, and you can get this figure object if you don't assign it to a variable with the function get current figure. And then if you apply the save as function to the get current figure, you can save it, for example, as an embedded postscript file, which you then can include with a graphics package in LaTeX, as we have seen. If you want to make a two-dimensional plot. This works in a similar way. You first create a vector of all the x-coordinates and all the y-coordinates that you want to evaluate. But then in order to have something that we can broadcast into a function, we actually need a matrix where each, we actually need two matrices. We need a matrix of all the x-coordinates and we need a matrix of all the y-coordinates of the points that we want to uh, evaluate. For this, there exists a mesh grid function where you feed in all a vector of all the x-coordinates and a vector of all the y-coordinates. And what you get out is a matrix of the size of the area that we want to evaluate. And in the matrix X, at the x-coordinate uh, that you want, um, it will have the value taken from the x-vector. Um, whereas, and in the other direction, you always have the, the same value, whereas in the y matrix, you have the uh, y value taken from the y coordinate and then shifted along the other dimension. So we're now evaluating a matrix and we look at the, uh, we take the x coordinate, square them, we take the y coordinate, square it, put everything into a square root. That gives us now a matrix that contains the distance from the center of the matrix. Then we apply the sine function to this distance matrix, divide by the distance itself, and we end up with something called the sync function applied. So this is a sine function that's divided by 
r the distance from the center um, the sync function has of course the problem that at the location zero um, even though the sine of zero is zero we're also dividing by zero but fortunately we can calculate the limit because sine in the vicinity of zero behave sine of x in the vicinity of zero behaves like x or sine of r behaves like r so if we divide sine by r through r we get the value one out so we look where in the matrix is r equal to zero and we just replace uh, that with one and then we feed everything into the plot three function for 3d plots where we get the matrix of x coordinates the matrix of y coordinates and the height of the function and then we get a nice plot if instead we want to have a photo of the function where the highest value is white and the lowest value is black then we can use image scaled image scaled means that it automatically adjusts the uh, brightness uh, again with the same parameters and a range which range of numbers should be mapped from uh, black to white and there's a range of color maps available and we just use a gray map um, <clears throat> normally the size of the plot will just match whatever window size you've chosen for the plotting window but there's a parameter that you can set um, for the current axis so there's several object types there's a figure for the entire plot but inside the figure there's the axis which is the object that actually defines the properties of the coordinate system and how the coordinate system is laid out within the figure and if you tell the axis object that its data aspect ratio should be 1 1 1 then you're telling it that you want to have square pixels um, that's why 10 in this direction and 10 in the other direction have exactly the same dimensionality Uh, this is an overview slide with some functions that I believe you may find useful and just to have a look at. Um, it contains the usual operators over not just scalars but also matrices, the usual uh, binary uh, relations. Um, how do you find out the length of vectors, the size of matrices? How can you construct a number of um, standard matrices, the all zeros, all ones matrix, um, the identity matrix I, or a diagonal matrix formed from a vector. How can you adjust um, plots? You can set the limits, what range of x and y and z coordinates do you want to plot? plot? How do you want to label the x, y, z axis? How do you read and write audio files how do you read and write comma separated value files that's sort of a, a simple file format that can easily be moved into and out of spreadsheet programs how do you read and write images how do you display images uh, how do you plot functions either with linear scales or semi-logarithmic scales where you show the logarithm of a value on one of two axes or a log log scale where you show the logarithm on both axes and then some signal processing operations uh, one dimensional convolution two dimensional convolution cross correlation will show up in the dsp course for example as will the fast fourier transform the inverse fourier transform and the two dimensional fourier transform there are functions to calculate sums or products along rows or columns or minima or maxima along rows or along columns. There are cumulative sum functions where you feed in a vector and then you get out a new vector that contains the sum of all the elements uh, to the left of the current element, including the current element. So this is a little bit like a, a discrete version of, of an of an integral where you sum up everything up to here or summation function um, same cumulative product there's a diff functions that kind of calculates a discrete uh, differential it basically outputs a vector where each element is the difference between the 
one element in the input vector and its neighbor. We mentioned already the find function and also you can have multiple figure objects open simultaneously if you want to show several plots simultaneously and each of these you can save into a graphics file. How can you define your own function? <clears throat> each function in MATLAB typically sits in, in a file of its own. So if you want to define a new function, for example, a function to calculate the factor behind the unit decibel, which is calculated 10 to the power x divided by 20. Um, if we have a program where we need this often or where we want to document that this means the amplification factor expressed by, for example, 20 decibel is a factor 10 in voltage, um, then uh, we create a new file decibel.m and in this new file we put function f equals decibel of x and then the body of the function calculates from the input x the result and then it assigns the result to the same variable that was mentioned in front of an equal sign in the function declaration. So here we say the variable f will at the end of the function contain the value that we want to return. So there's no explicit return statement you announce in advance the uh, name of the variable that is going to form the return value. MATLAB functions can actually return multiple variables. So you could write here f comma g comma h and then you get a tuple of three values back. The m file must be in the current directory or MATLAB has a search path where it searches for uh, functions in a sense similar to how the Unix shell searches for commands that it executes. Um, you can write edit and then the name of a function in order to edit the m file. If you type help and the name of a function, then it will show the first command lines that follow the declaration of the function. So it's customary to put the text that you want the help function to show immediately here at the start of the function as a comment. And as you can see here, the percent sign means the rest of the line is a comment, everything until the end of the line is being ignored. These M files can not only contain function definitions, um, they can also just contain scripts, just sequences of statements instead of a function definition. And if you just type the name of a M file, then it will be executed as a script. <clears throat> 